Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. Hi everyone, this is me, Katusha, with you and RussianPod101.com. So today we're going to be talking about 10 ways how to remember words. So my 10 suggestions to you how to deal with Russian uh, and make it easier to remember Russian words. Prepare yourself. It's not going to be easy to <laughs> repeat these sentences because they're a little bit big, but I will help you to deal with it. So let's begin. Читая как можно больше, особенно газеты, я запоминаю слова. Reading as much as possible, especially newspapers, helps me to remember words. You know, they say if you can read a, a newspaper of the language you're learning, it means you're getting closer to being native level. So if you can understand just a little bit, because um, the reading newspaper is much harder than reading any other literature. So newspapers could actually help you deepen your knowledge of the language you're trying to learn. Я говорю как можно чаще с носителями языка. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. I talk to myself in a mirror. <laughs> Maybe find some coffee conversations with like a language exchange with someone. So you can meet native speakers of the language, like uh, in our case is Russian. Я изучаю корни слов и как различные слова связаны друг с другом. I learn about the roots of words and how different words are connected to each other. It may help you to understand where the word is coming from. And uh, sometimes we have one word that could be uh, the main for creating another word. So, of course, it could be easier for you. And especially we have many words from other languages. And so knowing those words could also help you speak Russian more fluent. Я произношу слова вслух, чтобы я мог их услышать. I say words out loud so I could hear myself. For example, when you hear me speaking, if you put me on a pause and try to repeat after me and say it out loud, you can see the difference as you say it and I say it, so it makes you closer to, to the native pronunciation. So please try that, even if it looks ridiculous and you're staring at yourself in the mirror. Я слушаю песни. И запоминаю слова. I listen to songs and I memorize lyrics. Yes, it's one, it's one and easy way to learn traditional uh, like song. First of all, you learn culture of the language you're learning because in songs there are a lot of things what people of that country are thinking about and they want to say out loud to the world, right? So. Memorizing songs is a very great idea. Я стараюсь думать на русском языке, чтобы это стало естественной частью моего мыслительного процесса. I try to think in Russian so it becomes natural to my thought process. In Russian it sounded really long. I'm sorry, guys. So, of course, this is how you know your language is getting better because you actually start thinking in your not native language. So if you start thinking to yourself in Russian, congratulations! You're going great. Я упорно практикуюсь каждый день, разговаривая со своей семьей и собаками, даже несмотря на то, что они меня не понимают. I am persistent in practicing every day by talking to my family and my dogs even though they don't understand me. Okay, I know this is a crazy idea. <laughs> and you can get a crazy reaction from your family and from your dogs. So yeah, be ready to see very funny faces, a very surprised reaction. But if it helps you practice your language, why not? Я использую метод повторения. Читаю, пишу, И произношу слова снова и снова. I use repetition method, reading, writing, and speaking words again and again. Of course, if you want to work on your pronunciation, you can do that, but 
If you write it down, better write down in the combination of other words or like a sentence. So it helps you to understand this word inside the context. So it will be easier for you to remember it. Otherwise, if you just write down one word or say one word out loud, it's not going to connect it with anything else. So you can just easily forget it, I think. So mm, better use it with some other words or expressions or just sentences. Я пытаюсь использовать новое слово в простом предложении, поэтому я учу целые фразы, а не только слова. I tried to use a new word in a simple sentence, so I learned whole phrases, not just individual words. This is what I just mentioned in a previous example, I think. So yes, try learning as a whole phrase instead of just a word. It will help you definitely. Я стараюсь использовать язык регулярно в повседневной жизни. I try to use a language regularly in daily life. Yes, yeah, so I try from hello, from how are you, как дела, привет, хорошо, я тоже, а ты, and you. So uh, you can keep saying same things and then you will see how naturally it goes out by itself. So it was 10 ways to remember words and me, Katusha, trying hard to help you and remember Russian words. So, stick to our advice and don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you later. Пока -пока. Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. For some, learning a new language seems to come naturally. For others, the entire process feels more like a tooth and nail struggle. However, if you've had a negative experience learning a new language at one point in time, don't let that discourage you from trying again. The truth is that learning any language is never easy, but it's definitely possible. Sometimes the difference between success and failure has less to do with your abilities or talents and a lot more to do with the way you look at things. In this video, we're going to look at how to avoid five serious mistakes made by new language learners. Number one. Listen before you speak. Being slow to speak and quick to listen is good life advice, whether or not you're learning a foreign language. Effective listening is essential to communication. As a beginner, there is a tendency to concentrate so much on what you're going to say and how you're going to say it that you can completely miss the meaning or heart of what the other person is trying to communicate. Not only will this impair your ability to listen in your target language, it will also stall what little conversation you had going. Remember that conversations are a two-way street. If you're speaking more than listening, then you actually have more of a monologue on your hands than a dialogue. The inputs of language learning, listening and reading, are just as important as the outputs, speaking and writing. For a beginner, inputs are even more crucial, as they are the main way you acquire new vocabulary. We even go so far to say that for new students, the best method for learning involves more listening than it does speaking, though that may change with higher proficiency levels. Number two, don't be embarrassed when you do speak. People's next mistake usually comes from the other side of the spectrum, where new learners are too scared or embarrassed to contribute to a conversation. The fear of making mistakes and embarrassing yourself can paralyze your language learning. It's vital to remember that everyone makes mistakes. Even native speakers had to find their way through the language when they were children. Making mistakes while learning a new language is inevitable, but it's also a good thing. The faster you make mistakes, the quicker you can correct them and move on with your learning. So instead of being afraid to make mistakes, try looking at them as steps towards progress. In reality, that's what they really are. Number three, don't fixate on minor issues. If taken in all at once, a new language can feel overwhelming to learn. It's so easy to get discouraged by all your little mistakes and conversational mishaps and you lose sight of the progress you're making. In addition to mistakes, you'll also come across plateaus, where you study and practice consistently but don't see any results for a significant amount of time. But whether you face errors or plateaus, remember that these things are minor obstacles on the road to fluency. The most important thing is not to give up. Stick with it. If you stay persistent, your mistakes will be corrected and your abilities will improve. But if you slow down or throw in the towel completely, then you'll either subvert your progress or nix it altogether. So remember that as long as you're still studying and learning the language, you can't lose. It might feel like you're losing the battle for language learning for a little while, but hang in there. 
A practical way to help you stay motivated is to make small weekly goals. Research shows that goal setting has a significant impact on learning. Try picking one aspect of grammar or a collection of new words or phrases to study for the next seven days. At the end of the week, check your progress and measure your success. Setting little benchmarks like this will give you a rightful sense of accomplishment. Number four, remember that immersion isn't magical. A lot of people think that by moving to a foreign country, they will learn the language by osmosis. But whether you learn abroad or at home, you still need to study and practice the language. Living in a new country gives you way more opportunities to do this than staying at home. But if you don't consciously take advantage of these opportunities while living abroad, it won't benefit your language learning. If you're an expat living in a foreign country, there's a natural inclination to hang out around other expats. Learning a language and living in a foreign culture is hard and uncomfortable. For better or worse, we're often drawn to the easier road. If you made the decision to study abroad, then you want to hang out with native-speaking people as much as possible. You have the rest of your life to be with people who speak your language. This doesn't mean ignore your expat friends. Just be sure that you're giving proper attention to your language learning. Languages are better lived than they are learned. Number five, be open-minded. Languages are better lived than they are learned. When learning a new language, your brain will want to conform the new grammar and vocabulary to your native language norms and grammar rules. Ignore your brain on this one. At first, you might feel completely wrong saying a sentence that is in fact correct. After a certain point in language learning, there is a switch that goes off. When your brain finally realizes that you're not speaking your native language, but a new one altogether. This could take a while though, especially if this is your first time learning a new language. Until then, do what you know is correct, even if it feels a bit weird when you say it. The same goes for culture. Just as you want to be open to the differences in the language, don't forget to be open to the differences in the culture too. Hopefully this video helped you shift your thinking and approach language learning in a way that will help you become fluent faster. And that you'll learn to enjoy the journey towards fluency and savor the language for its own sake. That's probably the biggest language learning secret there is. And for even more ways to get started learning a new language, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, hello, it's me, Katusha, again with you and are you ready for the 10 hardest words to pronounce? 10 hardest words to pronounce. Russian pronunciation is not easy. So, are you ready for the challenge? Now, let's begin. Split. Come out to the surface. Split. Split. <laughs> I bet you can't say that. I guess uh, what's difficult about this. Uh, sound is that v and s come together one after the other v split because split is swimming or floating so something comes out from inside the water to the top to the surface so v split split okay now you can say this word Dnyom. in the afternoon well here you have a hard d uh, changing with the uh, soft yo, so it sounds like dnyom. I prefer having my breakfast in the early afternoon. Я предпочитаю завтракать рано днем. Достопримечательность. Attraction. Достопримечательность. For example, when you're going to Paris or somewhere, you can see many different um, tourist attractions. Let's make a sentence. Eiffel Tower is one of the tourist attractions. Eiffelевая башня – одна из туристических достопримечательностей. Кремль – главная туристическая достопримечательность Москвы. Крем – is the main tourist attraction in Moscow. <laughs> Did it sound too long? Well, sorry. That's Russian, guys. Ёжик – hedgehog. Ёжик. Ёжик. Этот ёжик такой милый. This hedgehog is so cute. Здравствуйте. 
Hello. Здравствуйте. Actually, in the middle of the word, there is a letter V. You can see in the writing form. But when you say it, it disappears. So, instead of Здравствуйте, we just say Здравствуйте. When you see someone for the first time or someone you don't know, you can say Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Катя. Hello, my name is Katya. Пожалуйста. Please. Пожалуйста. Uh, this word is usually uh, used in the beginning or in the end uh, of the sentence. So, if you want to ask for something, you can say Give me the receipt, please. Дайте мне чек, пожалуйста. Преподаватель. Teacher. Преподаватель. Well, uh, basically, teaching is преподавание. Or to teach someone is преподавать. Basically, to bring your knowledge to someone. My teacher was late to the class today. Сегодня мой преподаватель опоздал на урок. Пять. Five. Пять. Пять. Give me five. Дай мне пять. Yay! <laughs> Чебурашка. 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 It's a made-up word for the animation character. For example, I used to love watching Чебурашка. Когда я была маленькая, я обожала смотреть Чебурашков. Шишка. Пайнкон. Шишка. Well, how shall I explain this? It's like when you're trying whistling, but you can, so you say shh, you know? And then you just put another she after, so шишка. <laughs> Maybe it helps you. Шишка. Uh, there were many pine cones uh, in the forest. В лесу было много шишек. Well, I'm happy you stayed with me, Katusha. And, uh, and with 10 hardest words to pronounce it in Russian. Hope you could manage the challenge and I'll see you again next time. Stick to us and don't forget to subscribe. Пока -пока. Yeah! Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. So, you decided to learn a new language. At first, the idea seemed exciting. You bought a phrase book, dictionary, and a subscription to an online class, ready to dive headfirst into the language. For the first day or two, all was well. You gained ground quickly, learning a few basic phrases and words. A week before, learning that language was just a dream, but now you're actually doing it. Then, the third and fourth day roll around. The excitement is wearing off. You encouraged yourself to continue, and another week or two goes by, but with a lot less progress. Suddenly, learning a new language doesn't fill you with excitement anymore. Now it feels more like dread. Sometimes it feels like you're drowning in grammatical cases, verb conjugations, and wonky pronunciation. It all seems too much to handle, so you start to think about giving up. But we encourage you not to give up. Learning a foreign language is difficult. We won't pretend like it isn't. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Sometimes you just need to take a step back, reevaluate your approach, and come back to the language with a different perspective. In this video, we'll look at four tips for when learning a new language feels overwhelming. Number one, set aside a designated study time. Consistency is key when learning a foreign language. Studying 15 minutes seven days a week will benefit you more than cramming in two hours one day a week. Set aside an amount of time that works best for you. If you can afford to spend an hour every day learning, that's awesome, go for it. But don't feel bad if you can't spend that much time. Even 10 or 15 minutes a day goes a long way. Breaking up your learning into manageable time segments will relieve a lot of the stress that can come with studying a new language. Learning is not a race. Go at your own pace and try not to compare your progress with anyone else's. Number two, take it one bite at a time. Now that you have your schedule under control, it's time to focus on what you'll actually be studying. It's recommended that every one to two weeks, you focus on learning a very specific piece of the language. It could be a conjugation group, a case, tense, or a collection of theme vocabulary. Whatever you choose, hone in on it and do your best to feel comfortable with it before you move on to something else. Ever heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? Focusing on one thing at a time helps you break the language into digestible chunks. Number three, 
Expose yourself to the language in different ways. Don't just sit around reading about grammar all day. Obviously, knowledge of grammar is important, but you want to spice up your practice as much as possible. In addition to grammatical study, try to mix in a combination of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Try to practice reading by either translating a simple article into your native language, or maybe if you're a beginner, pick up a children's book in your target language. For writing, you can try to write out a fictional conversation between you and yourself, even. Use the phrases you know to create a mock conversation, and don't use any words you can't think of or you don't remember. To practice speaking, you can find native speakers locally at a language club or at a meetup. You can also find them online in a language exchange. For listening, a great podcast should do the trick. Spread out each type of practice, listening, reading, speaking, and writing across your regular language study schedule. This will give you a balanced experience in the language and should help keep things interesting. This method also works well when you use it to focus on a single aspect of the language like we talked about above. Number four, set mini goals, not just big ones. If your only language learning goal is to be fluent, you're likely setting yourself up for disappointment. While speaking fluently can be your ultimate goal, it shouldn't be your only one. Try to set mini goals month by month and week by week. It could be something simple. Learn 20 new verbs, practice a new case, or speak with three native speakers. As long as it's specific and reasonable to achieve in a shorter amount of time, it should work fine. Not having mini goals alongside your ultimate goal is a lot like sprinting across a huge open field. There's no reference point, so for much of the time, it feels like you're not any closer to your goal. It's not that you're not moving forward, it just feels like you're not. Without any trees or buildings to run past, it seems like you're running in place. Mini goals are like the trees and buildings of your language race. They help you see that you're moving forward and give you a sense of accomplishment. The desire for perfection can get in the way of your progress. Don't freak out when you struggle to speak or make a mistake. It's all a part of the learning process. Also, don't be afraid to speak, even if you know what you'll say won't be totally correct. It's better to do your best to communicate in the language and get it wrong than to never try at all. Learning a new language isn't always easy. In fact, oftentimes it's very hard. Don't let that discourage you though. Use these tips to help keep you focused yet unstressed in your language learning. A little perseverance will go a long way. Before long, you'll be speaking better than you may have thought was possible. And for even more help learning a new language without getting overwhelmed, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence-building exercises part of your language learning process. In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly without even thinking about it. If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. 
It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks, and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done though, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you wanna speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time, bye. Hey everyone, welcome to your monthly review the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal, something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn, one, why these bad days happen, and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining, no bad news, but you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good, you're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much and this affects your mood and motivation. So you're not as excited to learn anymore. So you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad. 
but that's completely natural and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement. And it doesn't matter if you do a 10 minute lesson or a five minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to set achievable language learning goals and resolutions. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye. Hey everyone. Welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay. Today's topic is how to set achievable language goals and resolutions, your new year's resolution solution. So for those of you that have set a language goal for 2019, what is it? Leave a comment and tell me. And for those of you that laugh at new year's resolutions because they just don't work, this is for you. Stick around. Today, you're going to learn number one, the top three reasons why language goals fail, and number two, what you can do to succeed with your resolution. In other words, how to set successful language goals. 
Let's jump into today's topic, how to set achievable language goals and resolutions. And speaking of New Year's resolutions, it's almost like a joke nowadays, isn't it? You set a resolution, you try to do it in January. By February, there's no progress and doing it isn't fun anymore. You quit and put it off until many years later when you start regretting all the things you've never done. So what's the problem with setting resolutions and why do we keep failing? Let's jump into part one, the top three reasons why language goals fail. First of all, regardless of what most people say, setting resolutions or goals is a good thing. You have to know where you're going and what you want to achieve, right? Otherwise, you'd spend days, months, years watching YouTube and have nothing to show for all the time you put in. But the problem with most resolutions is it's usually something like, I wanna master Chinese, I wanna lose weight, I wanna be fluent in Japanese. People set very big, vague goals. And that's the first reason why resolutions fail. Resolutions fail because they are non-specific and unmeasurable. What do I mean by that? Take a goal like, I wanna be fluent in English, Korean, or Japanese this year. The problem is that's a very vague goal, right? What do you mean by fluent? And how can you measure how much progress you need to be fluent in the language? You can't. It doesn't tell you anything about how much Japanese you should learn today, tomorrow, or how many minutes of Japanese to speak by month one, by month two, what resources to use, and when to stop and take a rest. So again, the first reason is resolutions fail because they are non-specific and unmeasurable. The second reason is New Year's resolutions fail because they're unrealistic. And you might say, but isn't it good to aim for the stars and set huge goals? Sure, it's not bad to want to go far, but if you say, I wanna be fluent by September, and you just started learning a language today, it's not impossible, but are you ready to commit yourself to nothing but language learning, six to eight hours a day, nonstop? If not, you need to be a little more realistic about your goals. The third reason is resolutions fail because there's no action plan. The problem is you'll still fail even with a specific and realistic goal if you don't know when and how you're going to do it. For example, when will you study? How long will you study for every day? And how will you study? So resolutions fail for three reasons. One, they're non-specific and unmeasurable. Two, they're unrealistic. And three, there's no action plan. Now, how do you set New Year's resolutions and actually succeed? Your goals should be one, specific and measurable, two, realistic, and three, have an action plan. So the complete opposite of the mistakes most learners usually make. And there are two more rules. Four, you need to set a deadline. And five, break down your yearly goal into smaller monthly goals. So how would this work? Let's say my New Year's resolution is to have a 30-minute conversation in Japanese by December 31st, and not, I want to learn Japanese one day, hopefully. Already, you can see that it's one, specific and measurable. You can measure 30 minutes, right? Two, it's realistic. I'm aiming for 30 minutes, not fluency. There's a clear deadline, December 31st. Before we get into the action plan, there's another important part. I break my resolution down into smaller monthly goals. So let's say my goal is to speak two minutes of Japanese conversation by January 31st, 2019. Again, it's small and measurable, just two minutes. I can time myself and see how far along I am. There's a clear deadline. It's realistic. I'm not looking to master the whole language. Just reach the two minute conversation mark. Now, what about your action plan? For that, you just need to answer these questions. When will you study? How long will you study every day? Where do you plan to study? How will you study? What's your study schedule? This is the most important part because this tells you when and how to study. So, when will you study? I'll study at 9 p.m. on weekdays, so five days a week. How long will you study every day? I'll study for 15 minutes. Where do you plan to study? I'll study at home, in the living room, on my computer. How will you study? I'll listen to one or two lessons a day to fill up the 15 minutes. What's your study schedule? Monday through Friday for 15 minutes a day. This makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Instead of saying, hopefully I'll learn that language someday and never taking action on your goals, by setting these small measurable goals, you know what you need to do. Okay, let's recap. 
To set successful language goals, your goals should be one, specific and measurable, two, realistic, three, have an action plan, four, a deadline, and five, be broken down into small monthly goals. So instead of saying, I wanna be fluent in 2019, try, I want to speak 30 minutes of conversation by December 31st, 2019, and then go even smaller and set a small monthly goal. So everyone, it's your turn. Leave a comment and tell me, what's your small, measurable monthly goal? And what's the deadline? Here are some examples you can steal for yourself. Learn 100 words in one month. Speak one minute of your target language in a month. Or do 20 audio lessons in one month. Deadline, January 31st. Now, speaking of lessons, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Ultimate Listening Video Master Course. Honest question, how sharp are your listening skills? With this video master course, they'll be as sharp as a razor. Download it right now. Next, the Talk About Your Body PDF Cheat Sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn words for parts of your body in the target language. Then, there's the Most Common Texting Slang Word List. If you want to text in the language you're learning, you'll love this. You'll learn how to say LOL and other words in your target language. And finally, the How to Express Quantity Vocab List, where you learn how to say if there's a lot, a few, or a little bit of something. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about the seven tested timeless ways to learn a language. In the meantime, like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye. Hello everyone again. Привет всем. And it's me Katusha with uh, 10 phrases that make you look like a fool. Мы не можем это сделать. We can't do that. Мы не можем это сделать. We can't do that. Just can't. Мы не можем. Yeah. Мы не можем это сделать. So did you hear what I said? Мы не можем это сделать. Okay? Просто делай то, что я говорю. Just do what I say. Просто делай то, что я говорю. Just do what I say. Okay? Просто делай то, что я говорю. Uh, do I look like a fool right now? If I do, then I succeeded. Ты не очень умный. You're not very smart. Ты не очень умный. You're not very smart, huh? Yeah, smart people wouldn't say that, I think. Ты не очень умный. Бедняга. Poor guy. У меня больше нет необходимости что-нибудь еще учить. I don't need to learn anything anymore. У меня больше нет необходимости что-нибудь еще учить. I don't need to learn anything anymore. У меня больше нет необходимости еще что-нибудь учить. I'm not gonna go to school. Я не пойду в школу. У тебя ничего не получится. You'll never succeed. У тебя ничего не получится. You'll never succeed. У тебя Ничего не получится. You'll never succeed. Never listen to this one. Это слишком трудно. Даже и не пытайся. It's too hard. Don't even try. Это слишком трудно. Даже и не пытайся. It's too hard. Don't even try. Это слишком трудно. Даже и не пытайся. Я знаю все. I know everything. Я знаю все. I know everything. Trust me. I know everything. Я, you know, it's I, know, знаю, все, everything. And because I know everything, here is another phrase. Я не нуждаюсь в твоих советах. I don't need your advice. Я не нуждаюсь в твоих советах. I don't need your advice. Я не нуждаюсь в твоих советах. Literally, it means be quiet, don't talk to me. 
Я не нуждаюсь в твоих советах. Я пока не готов учить русский. I'm not ready to learn Russian. Я пока не готов учить русский язык. I'm not ready to learn Russian. It's hard. Тяжелый. Я пока не готов учить русский язык. And maybe I'll never be ready. But if you watch Katusha... <laughs> Я уронил, уронила свой телефон в туалет. I dropped my phone in the toilet. Я уронила свой телефон в туалет. I dropped my phone in the toilet. Я уронила свой телефон в туалет. I mean, what else can I say after that? So, I hope you like 10 phrases that make me look like a fool. So, <laughs> subscribe and stay with me, Katisha. Пока-пока. Я права. And you are wrong. Wait, why did I say half in Russian? Hello again, and it's me, Katisha, with you in Russian language. So, today we're going to be talking about 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Wow, what's going to be? You're gonna try amaze me. Now, let's begin. Кроме русского, я также могу говорить на нескольких других языках. Apart from knowing Russian, I can also speak a few other languages as well. Кроме русского, я также могу говорить на нескольких других языках. Apart from knowing Russian, I can speak a few other languages as well. That will be very impressive if you can tell me that in Russian. Wow. Русский весело и легко учить. Russian is fun and easy to learn. Русский весело и легко изучать. Russian is fun and easy to learn. Yay! Maybe it's fun, yeah, but we're trying to make it easy for you. Спасибо, но на самом деле я не носитель языка. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. Спасибо, но на самом деле я не носитель языка. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. Your Russian is so good that you have to say this. У меня заняло всего год, чтобы заговорить свободно. It took me only one year to become fluent. У меня заняло всего год, чтобы заговорить свободно. It took me only one year to become fluent. Impressive! Я буду говорить по-русски как носитель языка через три года. I'll speak Russian as a native speaker in three years. Я буду говорить по-русски как носитель языка через три года. I'll speak Russian like a native speaker in three years. Well, yeah, three years is not bad. You can speak fluent like a native speaker. You never know. Я изучаю русский в течение десяти лет. I've been learning Russian for 10 years. Я изучаю русский язык в течение 10 лет. I've been learning Russian for 10 years. That's crazy. <laughs> Я изучаю русский самостоятельно. I'm learning Russian by myself. Я изучаю русский самостоятельно. I'm learning Russian by myself. I'm sure it's about you. You're learning it by yourself, right? Good job. Молодец! Я могу запомнить около 50 новых русских слов в день. I can memorize around 50 new Russian words a day. Я могу запомнить около 50 новых русских слов в день. I can memorize about 50 new Russian words a day. That's me. I can do that. <laughs> Я могу смотреть русские фильмы без субтитров. I can watch Russian movies without subtitles. Я могу смотреть русские фильмы без субтитров. I can watch Russian movies without subtitles. That's impressive. Wow, у вас нет акцента. Wow, you don't have an accent at all. О, у вас совсем нет акцента. Wow, you don't have an accent at all. У вас совсем нет акцента. Ой. Вы так хорошо говорите по-русски. Где вы изучали русский? Я не могу поверить своим ушам. О, боже! Вы точно не русский? Может, у вас родители русские, а? Нет? 
великолепно. Amazing. You just amazed me with your Russian language abilities. Oh my God. I can't believe my ears. I'm, what I'm hearing. Maybe your parents are Russian. Maybe you're Russian. Are you sure you're not Russian? Okay, so it was 10 phrases to amaze native speakers and me, Katisha. Don't forget to subscribe. Пока -пока. I want to do like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.